up, what's up, what's up, my fellow creators? Welcome, guys. Thank you for joining me in Becky's House of Cards. Please like this video, share this video, subscribe to my channel, set that notification bell down below. So that way you always know when the next video does go live. And yeah, today I am going to do a pick a card reading. And this is actually, I don't know why I was called to do this, but we're just going to go with it. So it's, what is this person's deal? And this is going to be about the energy that you're dealing with this person like what is their deal like what are you dealing with in regards to them and what is it that you need to know to hopefully move forward in your own life and this isn't to call this other person out this is more or less to just give you clarification on whatever this person is dealing with what is their deal in regards to you whatever pile you choose collective so let's see what's going on Source, what messages do you have for the collective piles one, two, and three in regards to what is this person's deal? What is this person's deal? What does the collective need to know in regards to this person? What is their deal? What's going on? What messages do we have for the collective pile one, two, and three? What is this person's deal? What is this person's deal? Why are they doing what they're doing, Source? What messages can we tell them? What is this person's deal? Okay, I hear you. What is this person's deal? What is this person's deal, Source? What messages do you have for the collective? What is this person's deal? Alright. For pile number one, what is this person's deal? Thank you, Source. Okay, for pile number two, what is this person's deal? Pile number two, what is this person's deal? What do they need to know? Pile number two, thank you, Source. And for pile number three, what is this person's deal? What do they need to know? What is this person's deal? The person they're dealing with. Pile number three, what is this person's deal? No, nope, not that one, okay. What is this person's deal for pile number three, Source? What is this person's deal? What do they need to know for pile number three? All right, I hear you, thank you, Source. For pile number one, what is this person's deal? What do they need to know? What else can you tell pile number one, Source? What is this person's deal? Whoa, okay. So I've got two cards that came flying out. So they want this one first. Okay, actually, we've got four cards for you, pile number one. You're done. <laughs> and pile number two, what is this person's deal? What do they need to know? What is this person's deal? What is this person's deal? What do they need to know, Source? Pile number two. Thank you. Pile number three. What is this person's deal? What do they need to know? What is this person's deal? What does pile number three need to know, Source? What is this person's deal? Okay. That's a weird. What is this person's deal? What does pile number three need to know, Source? What is this person's deal? Wow, they do not want to say what their deal is. Okay. Thank you, Source. Pile number two. What is this person's deal? What does pile number two need to know? Thank you, Source. And pile number three. What does this person need to know about what this person's deal is? Thank you, Source. Okay. Put this somewhere where it's not going to fly around here, float off, you know, you know, those things. Okay. And don't be mad that Pile 1 got four cards. A lot of times it's just a clarifying card, and I do have a deck over here to clarify if you guys need it for Pile 2 and 3, okay? So, Pile number 1, what Oracle card will help them along the way, Source? What Oracle card will help them along their journey? Pile number one. Okay. So for you guys, you got Stone People Vigilance. This is to help you choose from, okay? And pile number two. Alright, thank you, Source. Perspective, Milky Way. And pile number three. Thank you, Source. Lightning, power. Alright. So take a minute. Between your piles, we have pile one, pile two, and pile three. Take a deep breath. 
think about your person. Let me move these out of the way here. Turn these up right so that way then I remember. Okay, there we go. All right, and let's move on to pile number one. Okay, stone people, vigilance. What is this person's deal source? Okay, we've got the seven of wands in the upright. We've got the three of swords in the reverse. Okay. Wow, we've got the tower in the reverse. And let me move this over, actually, so I can move these down. All right. And we have the Eight of Pentacles in the upright. Let me just check on something real quick. Yeah, okay. All right. Oh, well, first and foremost, this person is uncertain about things that are going on. They don't know how to approach you. They don't know how to come towards you. You could be dealing with a Leo. We've got Scorpio craze energy coming in, Libra energy, and Virgo energy coming through. So this person doesn't know how to approach you. Like, they're very uncertain about things. And I feel like you've you know you've made it clear that you want them around in your life but they're just uncertain they're not sure what what to do and so they're not acting because they're so worried like they can't even approach you from a state of love because they're so worried about what's going to happen and this is a cycle for them like i think they've done this before in the past many many times and the problem is is that they're they're including somebody else in regards to this situation so they've brought up how they feel about you or what they think of you. This could be a friend. This could be a family member. This could be a past lover. This could be a potential lover. Okay. They've brought up to somebody else how they feel about you. And this other person has played havoc on their emotions and their mental state. And that has created a situation where they don't want to take action. And I think this person has convinced this individual that if they approach you, that there's going to be this moment of the house of God. Okay. Like this is the house of God card, this tower. Right. And it's like, God comes in and get, brings you clarity. Like he's bringing you clarity, knocking you off your rocker, off your emotional ego and letting you start to begin to listen to source and those, uh, signs from the universe. But, but this person has somehow convinced them that if they approach you, that things are going to go sour. And so this is them trying to like, not deal with that but what they're not seeing is that they're actually inviting themselves into a place where they're going to get a sudden shock like something is going to devastate them in regards to your guys's connection and that could be that maybe you walk away pile one that could be that maybe you just like basically say you know what i gave you a chance you didn't take it when it was on the table and i feel like i deserve better than that and i'm not just going to keep waiting around for for you to decide whatever the hell it is that you want to do because i'm worth more than that and this person's too busy over here conforming, like, to everybody else's ideas, to everybody else's life, to everybody else what they think. They, this, so, this person cannot think for themselves, pile one. They don't know how. They don't know how. They think that their only support comes from the people around them. And they build that up, and the only way that they build that up is by including these people in everything that they think everything that they feel and they're not listening to source like source is trying to tell them like hey look it's time for you to draw the boundaries it's time for you to draw the lines because you're not seeing how everybody else is battling you right you're they're they're in this situation where it's coming at them from every side and and you could be included in this on uh, uh uh that battle pile number one and don't take it personally, but it could just be that you've been like trying to get this person to see that you care. And then you trying to get them to see that you care, it's like putting a lot of pressure on them and they don't know what to do. And so that pressure forces them to go back and talk to these other people. And then they get stuck in their mind. And this is like defeat by a third party partner who's weaker than them. So this is somebody who's jealous of the connection that you two have. 
and whether that's a friend, a family member, whatever, it doesn't matter. Whatever position this person holds in your life, this third party that's involved is jealous of the connection that the two of you have. Because they saw it right off the bat. They saw it when they saw the two of you guys together. They saw how you guys clicked. They saw how you guys got along. They saw that potentially you guys have the ability to love each other more than this person and that them could love you know, you guys have a potential to build something that's stronger than what they've built together. You have a potential to just be closer than this person is to whoever it is that you're thinking about. And suddenly something happens like their whole world gets turned upside down. And I don't think it's just your person who gets turned upside down, but it's this third party that's involved as well. So something is happening where I think they're going to start being like, wow, I really can't, I can't rely on this person for advice anymore because they feel like they're leading me down the wrong road. And then something's going to happen between the two of them where they will, they will get led into a situation that they have to either A, let go of this person or they have to choose what's more important, my sanity or this connection, this idea of spiritual or not spiritual, just like this material bond that we have, because this is very material, this eight of pentacles, or this eight of coins here is very material, this is very, I have to build my empire, but I can only build it with people who think on a material plane, because they're, the, this person, this third party person, they sees, they sees, this person gets so tongue-tied when they're around you. Like, they cannot talk. They don't know how to talk to you. They don't know how to bring up the situation to you. They don't know how to clarify the situation with you. And they don't know how to bring up what they've done. They don't know. But the person, the third party that's involved, sees the spiritual connection that the two of you have. And that's what they thought they had with the person that you're thinking about. But they don't. The only connection that they have is whatever's in the 3D realm. And I'm getting the feeling that this person has taken your person for, for one hell of a ride. I feel like they've taken them for one hell of a ride. And, and they've basically stole all their ideas and made them build up their ideas for themselves. And, and then they don't want to give back in return to this person because that's not the type of individual that they are. And your person's going to see that, like suddenly they put so much energy into this third party connection here. And it could be a lover, it could be a friend, it could be a family member that they're dealing with, whoever it is. They put so much energy into that person that now their fortune has been completely messed up. They're no longer in this eight of pentacles energy, like this eight of coins. They're falling from grace. They're falling from their own ego. They have to go through this, right? They have to go through this. You can't, there's nothing that you can do to stop this from happening, pile one. You have to let it happen. And don't be snide about it either. Don't be like, well, they deserve that shit because of the way they treated me. You know what? They were treating you because they, the way they were treating you because they were being influenced by somebody that they trust and that they care about and that they hold in high respect in regards. So don't come in here with that crazy ass energy of saying, well, they should have, they could have, they would have. They didn't. End of story. That's it. This person is paying the price for it. And that's, that's sad. Like that it's sad because it's like they had a choice in the matter to say, let me deal with my feelings and my emotions, but there's so much coming from the societal belief that everybody outside of us controls us. And I'm sure you have been there too, pile one. If you say you haven't, then I'm sorry. I'm just going to crack up about that because everybody has the best of the best of the best has been there. We all had to learn because all of society teaches us to rely on other persons. Love the, love thy neighbor, but everybody forgets the part as you love thyself, right? Like that's the thing. And so you get used to getting these people in your court that you think stand up for you that have your back and when you find out they don't have your back. Your, your whole life falls apart. And I feel like that's exactly where you're at with this person. You thought this person had your back, but they didn't. They, they had this other person's back that was only concerned about their material wealth. And you were like, what the hell? And that, and you also went through this moment of reversal of fortune because it was like you were giving into this situation and now the tides have turned and now they have to go through the same thing they put you through. And that's not funny. 
is it fair? I don't know if it's fair. It's just the return of the energy that's been placed out. Okay. It's like you get what you give. And, and it's like, I feel like you're like, well, it's time for me to get what I want. And it's like, it's not even about that. It's like you too have to complete these cycles. And I feel like a part of you completing the cycle is coming up to this from a state of love and saying that, you know what? I don't think that they deserve anything bad happening to them. I know that they did the best that they could. And I'm just going to say that they taught me a valuable lesson. And that valuable lesson in this, I hope, was that you learned how to love yourself more and to put yourself first rather than putting it so much into another person, especially somebody who's going to make you wait, right? Somebody who's going to make you, drag you along. And I'm not saying they did that on purpose. And if they did, they did. But at the end of the day, it's all because of conditioning. And that's this three of swords in this tower moment is telling me that it's very much because of conditioning. Okay. And this is, this is their fortune. And at one time it was your fortune. Okay. And they don't see this coming. They don't see this coming. This is not something that's like, Oh, Hey, guess what? You messed up. So now you got to go through this bullshit too. No, they don't, they don't see this coming because they don't quite clearly understand what it is that they did to you. So what is this person's deal? I'm just going to tell you whether they did it purposely or not, they really didn't understand. At the end of the day, they didn't understand. Even if they did it with intention, they had no idea what they were doing to you. It's because of past programming. Okay. And this, this has to happen in order to push them into a state of abundance for themselves. And I think that that maybe this is the closure that you need for this pile one. I think that you had to also go through devastation in order for you to find abundance for yourself. And that's why the stone people have come out. And this card, it was so interesting when I first got this deck. This was the card that came out for me the very first time that I shuffled these cards for myself. And I was like, oh, I hate this card. Like, it's so weird. But this card is so deep and when you when you allow this card to speak to you it will tell you the truth of what life is these stones people have been here since the beginning of time there is nothing new only different and that's what they're saying we've seen worlds come and go and we're still standing like you guys worry about your day-to-day -day life and you can't stay present because you're so affected by your day-to-day -day life and you let your emotions completely control which way you go and we don't have that because we just have to stand here and be weathered by the storm and let the sun shine on us and let the rain fall on us and let the clouds come above us. But at the end of the day, we still are. We still exist. And so stone people ask you to stay vigilant, not because of fear and not because of conceitedness either. Don't be conceited in this. They're saying stay vigilant on your path because your path is your path. Okay, and that's what they're asking you to do is to stay present, to stay vigilant on this path now so that you can come up into a place of power within yourself and understand that this person had to put you through this because this was something that they didn't, they didn't understand the depths of what was going on here. So like I said, maybe they did do it with intention, but they're, when they set their intentions, their intentions were in hopes to get what they've gotten in the past. Because people have always reacted to this energy. And I think you reacted to this energy for a time pile one. And then finally you just put your foot down and you said, I'm done. I'm done with this energy and I'm not going to react to it anymore. I'm just going to walk away. And when you walked away, this person was like, wait, what? Because they're used to getting what they want and they didn't get what they wanted. And they didn't get the reaction out of you that they wanted. And, and that in turn started this moment of falling off of their rocker and then it also started opening them up to seeing that this person really has a lot of pull in their life they let this person have a lot of pull in their life and and that's what's thwarting all of their best efforts okay we've got orca song lines coming out this is talking about how this person has dealt with this from family Okay, this is a family situation that this person has dealt with and they're, I think they're going to come into an understanding that this energy has been present with them since they were a child and I feel like once they come into the understanding of that, they're going to be able to embrace their own inner child and gain some more clarity on their journey. 
Does that mean they're going to come running back to you? I can't say that. I cannot say that. Because that, that wouldn't be fair. It wouldn't be fair to you. It wouldn't be fair to them. Because we don't know. We don't know. This is about you guys learn, both learning a very valuable lesson. And that's about self-love. And learning to trust this process called life. It never goes the way that we want it to. It happens. And it happens without our control. Whether we want to try and control it or not, it still happens without our control, okay? And when you stay in these places of staying safe and coloring within the lines, you let a lot of life miss you. And I think that's what happened between you and this person. This person was trying to conform so much to what society told them that they had to be that they missed out on a good love with you. And I'm not telling you that to make you, you know, to, what is it? make you have a big head, especially with your ego or anything like that. Like, I'm telling you that because I think it's it's bringing you into a state of understanding your own self-worth. So it's like, regardless of how much you cared about this person, they were here to teach you a lot about your own self-worth. So what is this person's deal? They were a huge lesson for you. This card wants to come out. Lena, Lena Dunham. And she says, everyone forgets you except you. Ooh. She says, it's okay to play hide and seek by yourself. Don't be afraid of standing on the shoulders of your parents. Oh my gosh. Like, this is so relevant. Everyone forgets you except you. Like, this person thinks that you've forgotten them. They think that you've basically, like, since you walked away and you didn't react the way that you always reacted, they're like, well, they must have forgotten about me. They don't care about me like they used to. And I don't think that's the case at all. I think that you just, you had to save yourself. And it's okay to play hide and seek by yourself. Like, like this person doesn't understand that concept to be alone in life, to not have people to rely on, but these people aren't really reliable. This person doesn't understand that. They don't, they don't get that because I think all their lives they've been relied on by others and they needed somebody in their life to rely on like that others have been relying on them. And they don't realize that they have people in their court that just really aren't for them. They're not. And don't be afraid of standing on the shoulders of your parents. It goes hand in hand with song lines here. This person is dealing with a childhood wound. This person brought out a trigger for you and a childhood wound, which I'm hoping that you've healed. You may not have healed that, but you may be in the midst of healing that. If you're coming at this person like, ha ha, they deserve that, then I'm going to say it's probably pretty clear that you have not healed that yourself, okay? But if you're coming from this, like, wow, I didn't expect them to have to go through something similar. Like, that's that's pretty sad or it's pretty it's pretty heavy. Like, I, I understand where they're coming from. If you can come from it from a place of compassion, then it means that you're willing to look at your own wounding and heal from it. You know, I didn't do this so that we could point the finger at someone else and say, well, it's your fault that I'm so hurt. You know what? Oftentimes we're hurt because we're playing out old wounds that our parents left in us and it's not even our parents fault it's not our grandparents fault it's not our great grandparents fault it's the society as a whole and the way that society has been raised is to believe that everybody else somehow controls where we are as people and that's not true it's there's no truth in that whatsoever the truth is is that we have the power to change our lives and we have to find validity in our own lives with our own selves and we have to validate how we feel about things so were you hurt by this situation i absolutely think you were and i think that you were had complete and utter reason to be hurt okay i'm not like dis discrediting that at all what i'm saying is that I think that in being hurt, this gave you a valuable re reason to start looking at why you felt that way. And it gave you a purpose to look at that. And when you looked at that, it was kind of like brought you up out of the fact that you too were also living the wounds of your parents. And now you have an opportunity to grow beyond that. Right? So this is what I have for you, pile number one. Please like this video, share this video, subscribe to my channel. Check out my channel for more content. And until next time, guys, go forth boldly, my fellow creators, and courageously find creative ways to rise above in life, laughter, and love. And until we meet again, peace out. I love y'all. Bye. And I'm moving on to pile number two. So for those of you that chose the Milky Way perspective, this is this card doesn't come out that often, but it's been making a making an, a, an appearance here lately. What is this person's deal? All right. The Magician, next perspective. 
All right, the Ace of Coin in reverse. Ooh, and the Lovers in reverse. Oh my goodness. Okay, let me get a drink of water here. <laughs> so, I was seeing a reflection on here, and I thought it was on the... Anyways, <laughs> never mind, guys. I'm sorry. I just I was a little bit tripped out because I kept seeing the number 11 on here, and I was like, what the heck? Well, it's just a reflection of the cards. So, <laughs> what is this person's deal pile to? This person is trying to manifest a new perspective. Whether that's in regards to you or in regards to life. Regardless, this person wants to manifest passion and material wealth into this life. And what they're not facing right now is that... A couple of things they're they're being greedy they're being egotistical shallow okay and they're not letting a new beginning come in so maybe you've offered this person a new beginning but they're not letting it come in they've also dealt with so many third-party situations in their past they don't want to acknowledge that like they don't want to look at that at all and if you look this gentleman here in the card he looks very much like the magician Right? Very much like a, a mature magician. Like he's kind of come up from that, that energy and now he's like moving into something new. And that's the thing. It's like this is because they don't think very highly of themselves. Whoever this person is that you're thinking of, they don't think very highly of themselves. It's not like they're not capable of manifesting. They're very well capable of manifesting anything they want in this life. They have everything that they need. They have everything at their hands. It's like this is this is the world coming to them, whatever they want. But they're so focused on their coin. That's the, what they're holding in their hand is their coin. And they're so focused on that. That's the only thing that they care about. It's like maybe you've offered this person love. Maybe you've offered them, you know, kindness and compassion. You want them to be in your life in some way, shape, or form. But this person is so wrapped up excuse me guys this person is so wrapped up in their money they're exhausting themselves that's why i was yawning right now because i just got exhausted with this pile like they're just so exhausted and all they care about is their money it's like i keep hearing when i have then i'll be able to enjoy life and they're not seeing that they're letting life just pass them by because they're so wrapped up in their money right now they're so wrapped up in their coin and and maybe this is material manifestations, a home, a car, uh, a lifestyle, right? They're so caught up in this, though, that they can't see the woundings that are bringing misfortune to them. I hear misfortunes keep right now. That's funny. Ah, oh, that's funny. That just came out. So it's not that this situation is funny. It's just that that's a pirate ship. Misfortunes keep. And so it's like this person is looting. Like that that's why it came up. Like they're just trying to show like this person is looting. All they want is booty. They want to catch their booty. They want to get their booty and they want to loot the land and they don't care who they hurt in the process to try and get this. And then that's that's the other thing is that once they get their money, it's not enough. It's like when will it be enough? And I keep hearing it will never be enough. Nothing will be enough there because I, I have to have more. I have to have more. If I don't get more, then this is this is contingent on my image. People are going to think less of me because I don't have more. And that's the thing. It's like they think so little of themselves that they really think that the bigger their ban their bankroll is, that the more that people are going to like them. And look, look at how this this perspective card is. It's <laughs> it very much mirrors this coin, right? Like right here in the center of the card, and then you have these swirls on the outside. You have these swirls growing out from this. Um, this is the why can't I think about it? It'll come to me. I can't think about what I want. I, I hear it and I see it. It's the shell. It's it's how we all like the the fern unfurls like this. We all curl out even when we're in the fetus. Like we're in the fetus pose. Like it's it's the gosh. I'm just having a brain fart. Like this person is exhausted. Like I can't make that up. When I 
laid out these cards like all of a sudden i just like was fraught with exhaustion like this person is so exhausted in their seek for money that they're missing out on their their love their emotions they're missing out on the fun of life and that's what source is trying to say it's like they need to change their perspective so this person can't ever come to you because this person is so stuck on trying to find the gold in their life trying to find the gold they feel like the gold is the only thing that's going to light them up and that's all they want to work on manifesting is the gold and it's keeping them from honoring the fact that they have a very severe wound this is a huge wound that they're dealing with and the reason that they couldn't come into your life is because this is keeping them from entering anybody's life this is keeping them in a state of like denial this is keeping them in a state of resentment this is keeping them in a state of betrayal for themselves right maybe they did betray you for that coming through right here maybe they put you in a third party situation this person's very promiscuous and they manifest that and they're okay with that like they're okay with being promiscuous they don't want to change they don't want to change because that promiscuity is what gives them some sense of feeling it's what gives them some sense of of like feeling they belong in this life and and it's interesting because source is like really pointing this out the only thing that's on their mind is money 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 right like like that's it it's 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 not even like they don't even joke about it it's kind of like i get the sense that you're over there like at one point you really felt like your money was your worth too and this person's mirroring that back to you but it's like you've had to grow beyond that and now it's like you still care about this person it's not like you don't want them in your life you do care about this person wow i was getting a clarifying card and that came out right away look they don't want love they don't want love this is on the bottom of the deck they don't want love because they're so stuck in their money that they're basically feel like they have to make money in order to support all their friends and family look maybe it's a gemini i'm getting heavy gemini energy coming through look we've got the lovers we get gemini from the magician and i get gemini from this this person doesn't know how to communicate this to you they don't know how to communicate that they have to take care of so much they don't know how to communicate to you that they have to really focus on these other people and they can't even put themselves first and so that's why it will never be enough because they're trying to build an empire based on all these other people who don't even care about them and they're not willing to open up their eyes enough to see that and they don't know how to communicate that to you it's not that they don't care about you it's just that I hear that loving you would mean taking them away from this situation and if they got themselves out of this situation that might mean that they could be happy but if they were happy that would make them feel bad because they've taken care of these people for so long this could be family I hear the mother wound is coming up really strongly here like this is a disconnect from their feminine energy they don't know how to stand firmly in feminine energy look we've got a lot of feminine energy coming out right you've got earth and water there's a lot of feminine energy coming out but they're even their masculine energy is imbalanced too because it's like they rely so much on their masculine side and the only thing that they truly rely on is passionately moving forward into the future to get their coin and they don't know how to communicate to you that they don't feel like they deserve love and I feel like you're over there like, just tell me, like, tell me so we can talk about it. Like, I get this very deep caring sense from you, Pile 2. Like, you're very caring about this person. But look, they don't want to, they don't want to have faith in this. They don't want to have faith in this situation. They don't want to have faith in life. The only thing that they're willing to put their faith in is money. And they don't want to complete this cycle just yet. They're not ready to complete it. They're not ready to honor that completion yet. And that's difficult and i think it weighs heavy on you because you really care about this person and you really care about what it is that you know not that they think but like like that like you want them to see like i can bring so much to you but that scares them and that makes them feel like they've lost control and if they've lost control then what do they have left to 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 have anything over 
Like this person's very much out of control with their emotions. They're very much out of control with their feelings. They only think with one thing. Money. Money talks. Money speaks. Money is me. If I don't have money, who am I? And I think that they feel like if they don't have money, how can they ever impress you? Right? Like, and, and I feel like you're kind of in that energy of like, I don't give a damn about money. Like that's, there's so much more to life than surviving. There's so much more to life than just having your coin. There's so much more to life than buying material things. There's memories. There's times to, to go and enjoy and relax and just have a good time. And this person can't even come into that energy because they just blatantly don't know how. They don't know how they don't and they can't like their defenses on are on either sides like they're blocking themselves off from honoring this situation and at the same time they're sticking themselves in the in the back by saying all I care about is money but they're still being defensive about their money so it's like this person hoards money and doesn't hoard money at the same time it's like they're so confused that everything in their life is just a mess it's a mess and falling apart. And it's like, I feel like they want a future with you, but they're so busy trying to figure out their money that they, they don't know how that will ever happen. And they don't know how they can ever come in like that. They don't know how they can ever give to you like that. And it's like, I think they're afraid of taking those first initial steps. But like, I see this here, and it's like, they're, the, they're this bottom cup here trying to trying to lift everybody else up but look nobody else's cup is really full because they're just i mean if you have a cup and you turn it upside down what happens to the liquid it all pours out well their cup is poured out and they're taking care of all these other people they have a lot of people in their life that they have to take care of they have a lot of people in their life that they have to deal with so i feel like when you see 111 this person's thinking about you not 1111. When you see 111, this person's thinking about you. But it's also that reminder that this person has to overcome and they have to be willing to change their perspective. Everything isn't about money. There's so much more to life than money. There's so much more to this life than money. Even though we've been grown or we've been raised to believe that there's not that is but this person doesn't know how to communicate that to you they don't know how to communicate how they feel to you they feel so blocked away off and they're going to block their emotions because how how can they how can they they have so much to take care of how can they also add you in there and it's like i feel like they don't have to take care of you and they know that and that brings them happiness but look they fear that they fear that because that means that if they're happy, then what? Who who do they have to depend on them? No one. No one. And so they're ignoring their own stability. They're ignoring their own wisdom in this situation. They're ignoring their own inner wisdom that's trying to come out. Their, their, their higher self is trying to help guide them on this journey. And it, it's not necessarily towards you, okay, pile two. Like, I know that's what everybody wants to hear. Like, I want to know that they're coming towards me. No. I think at this point, it's kind of like you kind of have to cut your losses with this person until they really determine whether or not they want to learn to live or do they want to learn for money. Because right now, it just seems like all they're concerned about is money. That's it. And there's nothing more to that than just money. And so the the they're they're blocking themselves off from their protection and and this is always giving me that energy of like death energy right like transformation and they're not they're not allowing transformation to come in they're not allowing themselves to let go of what's no longer serving them it's like they're more or less worried about how they appear to the outside world and they're living in their shadow self because they're so afraid of being seen as happy because when people have seen them happy before it's just triggered a whole lot of arguments and fights and stuff and so they're just really afraid of being happy because they don't know how 
they don't know how. That's what their deal is. They just don't know how. So it's like, maybe you're over there like, but I know I can make them happy. Well, that is a trigger for you too, because it is not your job pile to, to make this person happy. They got to figure out what is going on with their own damn self so that they can bring themselves into balance. And when they bring themselves into balance, who knows, maybe they will become your 10 of cups. Maybe you'll become theirs. Okay. But it's not about you being the one that's Oh, let me balance you out. No, because you're basically, that's being in an act of, of violence towards another person because you're basically saying like, I don't trust you to make decisions enough for your own life. It's their life pile too. They have to make their own decisions. They have to do their own thing. They have to overcome this on their own. They have to realize that money is not the center of life. They've lived in an environment where money was idolized and until they honor the fact that money is not going to get them what they want in life, only then can they make the decision to move out of that. That's not something that you can ever change. Nothing you do in this life is ever going to bring them out of that. And then we have Elizabeth, Queen Elizabeth the first. This picture is so intense. Like her hair I don't know if it's her hair, if it's the top of her throne here, but it looks like there's a person in here and it makes me think of like, you have the crown floating over the head and then you have somebody coming up out of her crown, right? This person is so disconnected from source. So she says, have the heart of a man and the body of a woman. But I say there's a lot of feminine energy coming through here. This, this person's very much in tune with their masculine side. But they don't even have the heart of a man. Like, their heart is so broken that they can't see up from down. Okay? She says, I would rather be a beggar and single than a queen and married. Wow. A beggar and single. This person feels like they are basically a step up from being homeless. That's how they feel. It doesn't matter. They could have $100,000 saved up in the bank, not even touched it, whatever, right? And they still feel like they're losing everything. They still feel like it. And then she says, a clear and innocent conscience fears nothing. This person is so fraught with their own fears. They're disconnected from source energy. There's nothing. They can't listen to inspiration. They can't listen to wisdom. They can't listen to anything because they're so stuck in their head about their damn money. Like, look, this king of swords is looking at this ace of coins here, right? He's looking at it. He's like, that's all I care about. That's all I can think about. That's the only thing that's in my head. My emotions are all messed up, but you know what? As long as I got my mind on my money and my money on my mind, I don't care. I don't care. That's all I care about. And Queen Elizabeth is here It's saying, like, and she, there's so much symbolism here about connecting their soul with their heart and their heart with their body. And that's, they're out of that. They're out of that, right? When you're in the King of Swords, like, this is Gemini energy, your heart chakra. They're ruled by their hands, which is connected to heart and throat chakra. They don't know how to speak their truth. And they sure as hell do not know how to listen to their heart right now. And you can't sit around and be product of that pile, too. You have to let them figure this out on their own. Because they will come to the understanding, but it's going to be in their time, not in your time. And I think that's hard for us on this journey because we want things when we want them. We're so used to getting everything so quickly. Like we live in a, we live in a high speed internet environment. We live in a, our phones are our internet. We don't have to wait until we go home to get on the computer anymore. We live in an environment where you get, when you get a job, you get hired in a few days. You don't have to wait weeks anymore. You know, when I first started looking for jobs way back when I was 16, sometimes you had to wait a month, two months or three months before you ever got a call back because they would be going through so many applications. It's not like that now. It's like pretty much they go through applications. They have a algorithm set on the computer and you get a call back, right? We live in an environment where people don't cook food anymore because we have fast food at the, at our disposal, we have everything at our disposal and it's like, and it's so fast. Like you don't have to wait anymore. If, if a store doesn't have it, you order it on Amazon and it's here in three days. Like nobody knows how to be patient anymore because we're in a society where everything comes in a matter of minutes. And so this is, this is again pointing out, can you be patient? Can you be patient with this person? Can you still show this person unconditional love? Can you just... Be accepting of where this person at is at and understand that there's nothing that you can do to control the direction that this person is taking. They have to learn their own lessons. And 
sometimes that's going to be falling away from their coin. They're going to have to lose it all in order to understand that that's not what really mattered. And you in no way, shape, or form have any control over it. And please, if you feel like you do, don't. Don't try to control that because Source is, you know what, that always has a way of coming back around. Whether you believe in karma or not, I believe personally, pile two, I believe you get what energy you put out. So if you're being vicious in any one shape or form to this person, you're going to get that viciousness returned to you. And oftentimes it gets returned three to tenfold. Okay, it's not something that just... Oh, you know, like, that's not going to be bad. Like, I'm going to do this so that I can force their spiritual ascension. You can't force anybody's spiritual ascension. You have to do your own journey. You can't you can't make another person grow up. Like, you just can't. There's nothing that you can do to control this person. You can't convince this person that money doesn't matter. Because right now, this person, that's all that matters to them is their money. That's all that matters. And there's nothing that's going to change that in this moment because they have to figure that out on their own, okay? This is what I have for you, pile number two. Please like this video, share this video, subscribe to my channel, set that notification bell down below. And until next, or as always, go forth boldly, my fellow creators, and courageously find creative ways to rise above in life, laughter, and love. And until we meet again, peace out. I love y'all. Bye. And I'm moving on to pile number three. So for those of you that chose the lightning card, power, what is this person's deal? <laughs> Excuse me. Okay, we have the Nine of Wands in reverse. Oh, some interesting energies coming out today. Okay, we have the Fool in the upright. We have the Five of Wands in the upright. A lot of interesting energies coming in today. All right, let me just check one thing here. All right, I do want one clarifier for you. I did pull one on the last one, but I just, right off the bat, I want a clarifier for this Nine of Wands, please. May I please? Thank you, Source. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. All right, look. And the moon on the bottom. I'll take this one, too. Oh, and the devil behind that. All right, with this Three of Pentacles here, that totally makes sense with the devil here. All right, yeah, this person, what is their deal? They're dealing with a lot of codependency situationships right now. And they don't, they don't know how to overcome it. They don't know how to overcome it. Right in this moment, they don't know how to overcome it. And I feel like what happened was, is this could have been with a partnership. Um, with this three coin coming out, this is definitely indicating that someone had a partnership with somebody and that they stabbed them in the back. It could have very well been a love relationship that they had. Whatever it was, though, there was somebody else involved, and this somebody basically took them through the ringer. Like, they put them through this huge maze, and they just basically, like, made them deal with a lot of, of difficulties. And so this person was trying to build something, and they had to come up into this energy. Not sure why they're working. Hey, hey, it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. I don't know what's going on, but it's okay. I think she heard me hit my my foot on the thing and she thought it was somebody outside. So, but whatever this 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 energy is is that they were building something with somebody and this person, you know, basically took them through the ringer with it and so this person went through a lot of hardships and they ended up having to start over. They had to start over again. And it was really hard for this person because they had come so far on this journey. They felt like this was this was it. This was what they were going to do. This was going to be the time that they succeeded. And because it didn't come through like that, it really messed them up. Like there's a lot of anger and a lot of fear and a lot of negativity that's coming from this Nine of Wands here that they didn't want to deal with it. And so this was this was a situation that had come into them to show them that they were dealing with a lot of codependency energy and they were afraid to deal with that. They were afraid to overcome that because that's something that they were so used to from growing up. So this person was much better and much easily guided towards codependent relationships because those situations will continue to arise in our lives until we actually face them head on. And they didn't want to face what was going on head on. And I feel like this person knew what was happening like I really feel like this person was aware of what was going on but they did not want to come to terms with it they didn't want to face it 
Okay, and so what ended up happening was that this all fell apart and they didn't want to have faith in this project. They didn't want to have faith in this situation. They didn't want to have faith that this happened for purpose. Instead, it was just like they wanted to wallow in self-pity for a while. And I think that that affected you too because I think that that came down and rained down upon you. And that hurt a lot. Like there's a lot of passionate energy coming through here. It's a lot of passionate energy. Like, look, you've got the Nine of Wands, the Five of Wands, and then you have the Fool, and he's carrying his wand. Right? And and this person didn't want to give up. They couldn't give up. They're like, I can't give up. I've come so far. Like, I can't give up now. There's no turning back. Like, I can't go back to the way things were. I can't live that life that I lived before. I just can't. So I feel like this person picked themselves up dusted themselves off and maybe you were privy to this maybe you were the friend that was there that heard this information excuse me i need a drink and i feel like through all of that like it doesn't matter this person was just like look i know that i have success coming to me but i gotta deal with this and so they dealt with that and then we have the power and lightning card here this is talking about duality like i feel like they finally realized that that this is a this situation wasn't in spite of them right it didn't happen in to spite them this situation happened because there was something that they didn't want to deal with and that's that devil energy coming out backed by one-sided love right and that's that they didn't want to deal with this they didn't want to deal with the fact that the people that they cared about the most didn't love them the way that they loved them they put them on a pedestal and they didn't want to deal with the abyss of the emotions that was going on inside of their own life. And that's talking about those parent wounds that we all inherit, the generational curses that we inherit. And so what ended up happening is I feel like this, the moon came in, right? This moon energy came in and whatever it was that pushed them into this, this is talking about completely cleaning out your subconscious. It's kind of like the moon comes in and says, look, even though this is darkness, we're going to shed light on this darkness. Right. And so the moon came in and said, look, it's time for you to deal with this and understand that there has to be in order for there to be good. There has to be bad in order for there to be ugly. There has to be beautiful in order for there to be anything. There has to be the equal and greater opposite. And it was like they just kind of like accepted that it was kind of like I've dealt with it so much in my life that I accept that now. Like I can't not accept it because it's like I've dealt with it so much. And so they pick themselves up and they're like, all right, tell me what I need to do. And they let their angels guide them. They let their angels guide them. I feel like this individual sees 999 a lot. You might see 99 a lot just as a mirroring. Okay. And it's just that could be when this person's thinking about you. That could be when this person is, is thinking about telling you things. For your pile, I feel like you guys are in communication. If you're not, you guys may have um, fifth dimension communication. Okay, like I'm not saying this is a twin flame or anything. I'm not saying this is a soulmate because everybody's really a soulmate and whatever. That's, that's a whole nother topic for another time. What I'm saying is that this energy is saying that this person, they care about you a lot and they care about telling you things because they feel like you're always just the person that listens to them. It's not even that you give them advice. You just listen to what it is that's going on. And I feel like that helped them come into this state of understanding more about this situation. And they were able to pick themselves up, dust themselves off and say, okay, source, where do you want me to go? I'm ready to take on this new adventure ready to pack my things, the things that matter most to me. I'm ready to take from my experiences and I'm ready to really come at life with creative insight and be creative and just really just passionately move forward into, into the future because I'm tired of living in this energy. I'm tired of being in this energy. It's done. I'm done with that. I'm done with this, this energy of, of duality. Like I'm done with seeing it as right and wrong. I just want to see it as is. And that's the energy that they're coming from. They're like really stepping up into this and they're going to take that journey and sources like I got you. And then, you know, the angels are like pushing them along the way. Like, let me push you into some new beginnings. Let me show you how to stay neutral. Let me help you follow the journey you're meant to follow. And so it's like they really took that into into consideration and they stepped up into that. And then the beautiful thing is, is that even though things have have felt like they've fallen apart right like this is that energy of like 
gosh, like things really just didn't work out the way that I wanted them to. This They didn't work out the way that I thought they were going to. It's okay because they're regaining balance. They're walking themselves into a state of balance. They're walking themselves into a state of getting from this being right or wrong about this situation. And they're coming into this energy of like, you know what? It's okay. It happened for purpose. And so like if you're asking what their deal is and why they're not including you in that right now, it's because they're more concerned about finding their own inner balance. And that might mean letting you go for a while. That might mean letting you be for a while because there's more to this than than what they thought. And they have skeletons in the closet that they've buried for a long, long time. And they don't want to deal with that anymore. They don't want those skeletons to just keep arising in these situations. So they finally stopped and they asked either their higher selves or they asked source or their guides, whatever it is, right? Everybody believes something different. And they said, how can I change? And source is like, let me show you. Regardless, at the end of the day, creation energy came in and said, let me show you how to change. Let me show you how to step up into a beautiful energy. And so now they're headed towards balance and new beginnings and finding out who they are in their core and finding out what that's going to lead to what is that what is that going to grow within them and i feel like this person was also mirroring you in some way shape or form because i feel like at the end of the day maybe you are a person who gives too much and that is something that was definitely mirrored in this, but this person's growing. And I think that in some way, shape or form, I'm getting the sense that this person has inspired you. They've inspired you to grow. They've inspired you to look at your own situations to see if you have one-sided love and codependent in issues in your own life. Do you have any addictions? Do you have any possessiveness that's going on in your life? It's like you can't stay too attached to any one thing because when you stay so attached to any one thing then you you deny yourself the beauty of life right you really deny yourself the beauty of life and so that's the thing it's like source came in and 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 showed them what was really truly passionate for them and they found out a new way to live life it was like they took a breath for the first time like i know how to breathe you guys, even though I got clarifying cards, it was pretty pretty short and simple. Like, it's like a lot of battles going on and then them finding clarity for themselves. Like, this person doesn't really have... I mean, everybody has issues, right? But it's not like, oh my god, what is their deal? Like, I can't believe they're like that. No, it's like, I think that you're generally con concerned about this person and I feel like they're concerned about you too. Not as much as, like, worrying. It's just like, you want them to do the best and, you, and they want you to do the best too. And it's like... Even if they're not in communication with you right now, or if they are, and it's not as much, it's just because they're really, truly trying to find the balance in their own life, and they're trying to really honor this journey that they're on, and not very many people actually are brave enough to do this. They're not brave enough to actually look at the subconscious in their mind, right? And and this person is. That's too many, Source. I just need one, please. And this person's willing to look at that, and... and this is absolutely a cycle, and with this Three of Pentacles, or this Three of Coins here, it's showing that they weren't willing to listen to their own guidance that was trying to come through. I think they got a lot of guidance in this, but it was like, so I get that this person was in their intuition, they listened to their intuition, they have a very keen sense of intuition. But I feel like what happened is when their intuition went against whatever it was that they were building, they were just like, you know what, no, like I can't, I can't even look at that, like I can't. Because that's just me playing out old fears. Like, I really feel like this person's been on this journey for a long time. And I feel like this was a part of that journey. And Source is saying, like, no, like, we put this situation in front of you so that you could listen, learn to listen to your intuition better. Right? And with this cat, some people say it's a dog, but it looks like a cat to me. A cat, for me, is always connected to your intuition, right? And, like, in the moon, there's the two dogs, and that's talking about companionship. Dogs are loyalty. And it's like they had to realize that they had to be loyal to their own, or own inner self before that they could ask somebody to come in to be loyal with them. I don't know why I want to read this one first, but it's so crazy that this card came out. Whitney Wolf Heard. Okay, so... This is one of the ones that I've read, and if you guys don't know the story about her, is that she was connected with those guys that created, um, what's that dating app? 
Tinder. She was with those guys, and then suddenly something happened, a lawsuit happened, and then she went out and she created, I think it's called Bumblebee, she created it on her own, and that's that matches the situation perfectly. It's like they were creating something with this person, but then they had to walk out on their own, and it's just so crazy that this card came out. And so, and now she has one of the biggest websites. I think it's, I think it actually is up there with Tinder or it's even better than Tinder now. Like it just depends anyways. I don't do those dating sites. It's just that that's what it said in the book with this. So she says, if you don't make the first move, someone else will. And I think that's what happened here is like they didn't make the first move and this other person did. And it just, it like made them fall flat on their face. She says, every hour spent staring at a screen is an hour spent alone. And I think that's what happened. This situation made this person feel very lonely. Regardless if you were there or not, this situation made them feel very lonely. Beware. To other people, your profile is your true self. Yeah, so there was a mask. This was this was the mask coming out. And the mask was is the fear of listening to intuition. The fear of what intuition is saying. So what's this person's deal? This person is afraid sometimes because they're afraid of what their intuition is really trying to tell them. And their intuition is just trying to lead them the right way. And sometimes that's scary because it's telling them exactly what they don't want to hear. And that's what this situation was. It wasn't what they wanted to hear. They were aware of it. They were well aware of it. But they couldn't bring themselves to honor that because they really felt like that was a past energy. They really felt like that was a past life coming through and trying to to bring out fears and really sources saying like no this is the same kind of energy that you've always been dealing with i'm sending this to you so that you can face that fear of not trusting yourself and then we have number 34 which is seven and will coming out and this is talking about how it's okay to be powerful own your power and it's interesting this person that you're dealing with might be a woman okay like there's very feminine energy coming through with these oracle cards it doesn't have to be you guys could be a woman or this could just be a woman friend that you have or a very feminine masculine that you have right like like we all embody both aspects so it doesn't matter this person definitely embodies that feminine energy though whoever they are and this this is talking about not being afraid like especially if you're a woman don't be afraid to exert your power and your power is your will like you're your willpower. Can you make decisions for yourself? Are you willing to stand in those decisions by yourself? Are you willing to really voice how you feel about a situation and to move forward on that and to not let that drag you down into what other people think you need to be? And so this is this person had to go through this situation with or without you, Pile 3, so that they could really truly step up into their own power. And that's what happened with them. There was no way that this person was going to drag you through the muck with them. They didn't want to do that. They wanted to be there in a place of stability for themselves. And that's really, truly what happened here. And I think that they finally learned that, okay, it's time for me to listen to my intuition and what comes in the future between the two of you. Who knows? Who knows? Right now, this person is dealing with something that's extremely heavy, extremely heavy. It's extremely deep and it's very deep centered. Okay, and so now is is where they're really coming up into a place of honoring that this was difficult energy for them to deal with. And now it's like I have to really stand out on my own. And if I don't stand out on my own, how am I ever going to succeed? This is not a plight against you, Pile 3. This is really truly them learning how to deal with it on their own. It's not that they don't care about you. It's just that they had to learn how to stand up for themselves because they've always given themselves so much to other people. And I don't know why, but I feel like I want to draw one more of these Earth Magic cards for you guys. Yeah, okay, that's why. It flew out right away. Look, harmony. Because they're trying to find balance and harmony within themselves. Like, this is, again, matches this power, this duality, right? Without lightning, there would be no thunder. And that's what they're saying. Like, it's trying to just bring their life into harmony, to bring their life into a place of peace, to bring their life into a place of balance and to not be so argumentative anymore, right? Not to be in this energy of voality. Like this is like saying that source is bringing upsets into your life. And I feel like that's what this situation was. It was very upsetting for them. 
The situation made them upset. It made them feel like nothing was going to come through for them. It made them feel like everything was falling apart. And if you see these two faces here, right? It looks like they're kissing each other on the cheek. Like, this situation brought out a lot of energy for them. And, and it really... It really played havoc on their soul. And finally, because they were willing to go within their own their own hearts, within their own subconscious, they realized that Source really brought this as a lesson. This wasn't just something that was placed in my in my in my way so that it could upset me. This was really placed here so that I could deal with something that was really truly deeply buried within me that I had no idea about. Something that they'd swept under the rug and they never thought they were going to be pulling back out. And Source is like, oh, guess what? Guess what? In order for you to become successful, we need to deal with this because this is always going to keep you in that state of inviting people into your life that don't have your back. If you don't face this. And so they were finally like, okay, I'm going to face that. And when they face that, they realized that they had to exert their own will, that maybe they had to stand on their own. Right? And in standing on their own, they're learning how to bring true harmony into their life, to listen to the song of their heart, to listen to the music within their soul. And that's something to be admired. Like I said, I feel like this person inspires you. I feel like you see them doing this. I feel like you see them always bettering themselves and you're just kind of like, wow, like I wish I could do that. Well, you can, you can pile three. This person is just setting the trend because not very many people are willing to look at life this way. And this person has a very huge way of looking at life. And I don't often get readings like this where I find other people who are on a very high conscious level. Like a lot of people, and it's nothing against the collective. It's just that so many people, they vibe at one level and they get to a higher level. And they stay there because they think that's it. They think that's the growth. And it's like this person, you can feel the the pull from where they once were to where they are now and and it's absolutely something to be admired this person has gone through the ringer this person's been through hell and this person has learned how to appreciate the hell that they've lived in and they've learned to overcome the cycles that were in their lives so that they can move up into a greater uh, mindset and I'm sure that they've had to sacrifice a lot. I'm sure that they've had to give up a lot. I'm sure that they've had to overcome more than most people would be willing to admit. And in that, I think they've lost a lot of people as well. They've lost a lot of people who they cared about. They lost a lot of people who they gave and they've given their trust to, who feel like they've given their word to. And at the end of the day, it's like this person realizes, it's like, you know what? These people came into my life because maybe I do have something great to offer, but I got to see that for myself and I got to go try it on my own now. I got to go try it on my own. And so here they go, taking the fool's journey. And people probably think they're pretty foolish. Like, you know, you failed all these times, but you're still not giving up. Like, that's a fool's journey. And it's like, this person's like, you don't understand. I can't give up. I can't give up because I've come so far. To give up would, to be, would be going backwards. And when we go backwards, we're dead. I can't do that. Nothing in life is going to be okay if I do that. And so this person continues to move forward. They continue to overcome. They continue to, to face the fears that come up. They continue to say, you know what? Maybe it is hard, but I'll take the difficulties over the heartbreak anytime. I'd rather face it and feel uncomfortable than to not face it and get the, the short end of the stick. This is my journey, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come at it with passion, and I'm going to come at it with love, and I'm going to come at it with clarity of mind, because I deserve that. So absolutely, if you look up to this person, Pile 3, you should. You should, but you should also you should also take that as a statement to say that it's time for you to really embark on your own inner journey. Because if they're inspiring you, then now you're in a place to really honor that they've come up into a really strong state of mind. And if they've come up into a strong state of mind, then you're going to have a place to really, really have somebody help you along. And not, not by getting their advice, but by allowing their movements to inspire your own, own movements. And that's really what this journey is. No one who takes this journey can tell another person how to live their life. 
all they can do is say, I tried this, this, and this, and you can try it too and see what works for you and then take what works for you and turn it into your own thing because that's really the truth of life. We're all here together and they're learning that and they're learning that everything good and bad is really part of learning them how to balance their own energy out and that's a beautiful place to be at. All right, so this is what I have for you, pile number three. Please like this video, share this video, subscribe to my channel, set that notification bell down below so you always know when the next video does go live. I really appreciate you guys for joining me for Becky's House of Cards, but until next time, go for it boldly, my fellow creators, and courageously find creative ways to rise above in life, laughter, and love. Becky's out of the house for now, and until we meet again, mwah, peace out. I love y'all. Bye.